When it comes to who's getting tested and who isn't, the conversation leads to myriad genetics. When I tested for the BRCA mutation, my blood sample was sent here. Myriad Genetics owns the patent on the BRCA1 and 2 genes, and they control all commercial testing in the US. We're now receiving about 350 samples a day. Let's move on a See, little bit. See, I think bit. of these as, all, as well, people. This is, these are people. These, yes. are, these have the DNA that is a part of each of those people in these packages. I think the single greatest inventive thing I did was to create Myriad. After Mary Claire King's initial discovery, labs across the country, including hers, entered into a race to find the exact location of the BRCA1 gene. Mark Skolnick launched Myriad with that goal in mind. She put us in the solar system, OK? Then it needed to be located to the planet and the continent and the state. It became the media genetics race. Now a painstaking gene-by-gene -gene search is on for the critical mutation. The King's lab has been getting tantalizingly close to its goal. Researchers believe they will isolate the breast cancer gene within a few months. We did it to win the race. The group that was in that laboratory, working seven days a week, were doing it to beat the other team, period. And, uh, we, and we won. Here's the BRCA1 pack. Linked breast and ovarian cancer susceptibility gene, patent 5747282. So the most controversial patent would be the composition. There's there's of no these. controversial patent. It's In, all very very easy to understand if you take the time. When I tell women about the patent, the reaction I get is, "How can you patent a gene? It exists in nature. It's like patenting your your thumb." What if Watson and Crick had patented the DNA molecule? Nobody would have ever been able to do of any course, of research. Of course, no, it on doesn't. You. Patents don't affect research. There have been more publications on BRCA1 and 2 than almost anything else. People aren't upset about having patents for their iPods, or patents for their telephones, or patents for their computers, or patents for their cars. If it weren't for patents, modern society would not exist. Well, I would argue that people were upset because there's money being made on something that exists in nature. Right. If we make this huge, multi-tens of million dollars investment in educating the market, don't we have a right to deliver the test? The facts are that women are getting tested, and their lives are getting saved, and I guarantee you they would not be being tested if it weren't for Myriad. I claim you would not be tested if it weren't for Myriad. I don't you know. would have not been tested. What There'd be no reimbursement. I don't have evidence. Okay. All I know is the doctors were not prepared to do this. We had to teach doctors. We've taken every problem that comes up and solved it because we have a commercial interest. A controversial new television ad is making headlines this morning. It urges women to get a genetic test to see if they are likely to get breast cancer. Take a look. Breast cancer runs in my family. My mother. My grandmother. My dad's sisters. I wondered if it would be inevitable. I found out it didn't have to be. I found out my risk through BRAC analysis. And you said, when the test came out, that this is going to be a less expensive test. This test will one day be hundreds of dollars. So why is it still $3,000? Why is it increasing? That's a good question. And I think there's a point at which we have to start looking at decreasing the cost of the test. The critical thing, in my view, about the patents that we hold is that um, none of them are exclusively licensed. So they are all completely open for anybody to use for research purposes. And any company that wishes to license them can license them for a trivial amount of money. I don't know what it is, but I, my last royalty check was literally $2.73. Nowadays, when we find genes, we just publish them. We don't patent them at all.